And with a place of honor, we have a man who uh, took on a difficult job under any normal set of circumstances in November of last year. So just about a year ago, Phil Neuenfeld was elected president of the AFL-CIO in the state of Wisconsin. And he, came, and he came from the private sector union, from a machinist in Milwaukee. And he came at a moment in which it became more important than it had at any time in a lifetime for the labor movement to rediscover the meaning of the word solidarity. from the 250,000 members of the AFL-CIO in Wisconsin. And how many of you in this room have signed a recall petition? How many of you are going to take the petition around with you everywhere you go from now until early January? How many? Last Tuesday, November 15th, we kicked off an unprecedented recall of Governor Walker, Lieutenant Governor Cleefish, and three state senators. The people of Wisconsin are standing up, they're coming together, and they're reclaiming the state. And one thing is very clear to all of us, and that is that we cannot take another three years of this governor. Hundreds of events were held across the state on Tuesday to jumpstart the signature collection. I was in Wauwatosa, where thousands gathered on a nearby practice field before heading over to the street that Scott Walker lives on. Scott Walker, well, when we got to the street, his own neighbors on the block welcomed the Rolliers to their front lawn to sign. see, when it comes down to it, Governor Walker's divided his own, his own neighborhood just as he's divided the whole state. You know, Walker, he's trying to pin worker against worker, family against family, but the people of Wisconsin won't let him. We've started something that will stop him in his tracks, and we need to put an end to his extreme regime. Right? Radio. You know, Walker went on and he told Charlie Sykes, I don't know if you all know who Charlie Sykes is here. But he was crying, they were whining, they were saying, you know, those people that came into my neighborhood, they were crossing the line. He said we were crossing the line when we peacefully and quietly marched into his neighborhood. Well, I have news for Governor Walker because he hit every working person right in their home this year. Yeah. Yeah. And you know what's crossing the line? What's crossing the line is when you strip 175,000 public employees of their right to collectively bargain and their right to have a union, that's crossing the line. Yeah. And you know what's crossing the line? Is when you kick 65,000 Wisconsinites off of budget care and half of these are children, that's crossing the line. kids will not be able to go to, this, to, to the doctor this winter because of Governor Walker. That is crossing the line, brothers and sisters. A recent survey of Wisconsin superintendents of schools found that nearly half of students' class sizes are increasing endlessly. The governor is putting his corporate allies like the Koch brothers over the education and well-being of our state's children, and that, brothers and sisters, is crossing the line. At every step of the way, Governor Walker has made it clear that he's putting politics above the people. And never once, when he was campaigning for governor, 
did he talk about going after collective bargaining rights. Never once did he campaign on dismantling our schools and communities with draconian budget cuts. Brothers and sisters, he lied to the citizens of Wisconsin, yeah. and that is crossing the line for any public official, right? Yeah. And now you know, Governor Walker, he's out. He's raising millions and millions of dollars. He's going to other states across the country, comparing himself to Regan, talking about how when they busted Patco, they busted the spirits. Well, that's not going to work here in Wisconsin. It's not going to work. You know, he's now in the media, he's saying, hey, I'm not responsible for the recall actions. Well, if he's not responsible, who the hell is? He wants folks to forget what's happened over the past year. He doesn't see the problem. He doesn't feel the pain that he's caused. This guy is out of touch, right? He doesn't understand that by dividing the state, he's putting us in a worse position to compete for jobs in this global economy. And his promise of jobs, remember that's what he ran on? Jobs? Well, for three months in a row, we've lost jobs. Just in October, we've lost 9,700 jobs. So, will we forget what this guy is about? No! Will we let him redefine himself? No! Governor Walker, you may have fooled us last November, but the people of Wisconsin are waking up. The new polls show that support, even from his Republican base, 58% of Wisconsin believes that Walker should be recalled. Yeah. I don't have to tell you that the energy, the determination, the drive, that it is here. It's here in this room. It's going to be in the streets of Madison at the rallies tomorrow. And we're all going to be there. We're all going to pitch in. We're all going to work. We're all going to stand shoulder and shoulder. We're going to get to work. We need to collect those signatures. We need to continue to educate our friends, neighbors, and co-workers on the harmful impact of Governor Walker's agenda. Together, we can win. Together, we must win. Together, we'll stand up for our Wisconsin. Together, we'll get the Badger State back on track. So together, let's recall Governor Walker. Together, forward and solidarity. Thank you, brothers and sisters.